Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wogan. I'm back with some more Master Duel because today they finally revealed the ban list for the N slash R Rarity Festival. And I've been actually really looking forward to this because it sounded like it's either going to be a lot of fun or a big mess. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I figured we'd look at what the event has to offer and then I'll show what deck I have planned for it. Thankfully, it didn't hurt too bad. Um when they announced that there was going to be a ban list specifically for N slash R cards. So let's look into it. First of all, let's look at how the rewards have changed. So based off of my quick, very bad math, I think it's 2,100 to get this many points. And it's all gems at the beginning. And it looks like then it is legacy pack tickets. And I don't know if these legacy pack tickets are just straight up the ones we already have, or it's going to be like the last one where it's just like a set number of the legacy pack URs and SRs and stuff like that. Um, we'll see. It looks like we're getting slightly more. No, it doesn't look like we're getting... Yeah, maybe because we're getting down back of it, we're not getting a special version of it, which is fine. Uh, these gems will be very nice because the new pack is coming up pretty soon, hopefully. Um, and 2,100, that's enough for two, <laughs> two 20 packs at least. So I'll gladly take that. Uh, next. Let's see. Actually, let's check out the loaner decks. I wonder what they have to show. So Tangled Hawks asks, a deck that has a lot of cards that can interfere with your opponent's strategies, use Cyframe monsters and Paleozoic trap cards to counter their tactics. The key to victory lies in how you form chains and use Iron Chain monsters. So let's see, Iron Chain, yeah, it's an Iron Chain monsters with some psychic dudes in here. I can't believe that some of these dudes actually were able to make it. I know you need this guy, but what do the others do? I only know what the one hand trap one does. Uh, when your opponent monster clears and while you control the monsters, you can special summon this, both this card from your hand and one side frame driver from your hand deck or graveyard. And if you do, destroy the attacking monster. Then end the battle phase. Hmm. I mean, that's cool. I like that. Planet Pathfinder. Paleozoic Halogenesis. Funny enough, I of the Paleozoic, I would just use... Really? Not three of Denimiscus? That seems silly. <laughs> But what do I know? Uh, and also none of the... Actually, I don't think any of the Paleozoic XYZ or Leaks monsters can be used in this format because they're either UR or SR. But they have a whole bunch of other ones. Interesting. Interesting. The other learner deck. The Bond of the Passion cards. A deck that battles with warrior type monsters while powering them up with equipped spell cards. Use monsters that have effects and make them into equip cards and aim to synchro summon. Interesting. Squeak Knight, Infernal Knight Roland, <laughs> Mataza the Zapper, <laughs> who I have bad memories of due to tournaments. Oh, and one of these and one mission. Oh, it's limited to one in here. I should check out the ban list next. Trident Warrior. Interesting. An equip deck that also has uh, a buttload of synchro monsters in it. Does it have polymerization? How do you summon this guy? It's cracking up your target by effects or effects monsters. So yeah, how do you summon him if you can't? Wow. When your opponent special summons a monster from the hand or extra deck, shuffle that monster into the deck, then you lose a thousand life points for each return monster. It's not bad. Considering. Con all things considered. <laughs> you have no idea how you get this guy out. Unless there's some card in here that I'm not reading that lets you fusion summon him. I don't have time to read, please. And finally, Thunderbolts in the Far North. A deck based on Armed Dragon, which evolves into a higher level dragon, which the right conditions are met. Overcome your opponents and get Armed Dragon. I can't believe Armed Dragon level 7 has fallen so hard. Back when I started the game, he was basically a UR. Now look at him. Sad state of affairs. <laughs> but it's fine. I can't believe there's enough arm dragons at our, and, and our level to actually make it a deck around it. That's neat. I don't know how viable it is, but it is neat. Alright, let's look at the ban list. So the ban list is pretty obvious here. It's all SRs. They fear Cannon the Sword Mistress. Ban her. Look at this. Do you, have you ever wondered why this card is an SR? If you play Yu-Gi-Oh, you know the reason why, because it's really funny. It's because she's an extremely expensive limited card 
Um, and because of that, she's an SR in this game. <laughs> It's the only reason she has a high rarity is that actually she's one of the most expensive cards out there. At least I think she's one of the most. She's not like on the level of the normal card Black Luster Soldier, but still pretty high up there, I think. All right. Basically, every single UR and SR is on here. If you've ever wanted to see um, Despot number two banned, congratulations. This is your format. This deer banned. Zaborg the Mano Monarch. Ban. Get him out of here. For right for bear? Ban. The only way you'll ever see Herald of Ultimate Ban. <laughs> Ultimateness banned. Is in this format. Herald of the Arc Light. Ban. They said Drytron. Get the hell out of here. Everything ban. Alright, let's actually look at the limiteds. Funny enough, <laughs> the Exodia pieces are limited still. But actually, Exodia is forbidden. The SR stat is too strong. Now, funny enough, uh, I think a lot of the cards on here are burn cards, because Deskwall is on here, Stealth Bird is on here, um, Poison Mummy is on here, Needle Ball is on here, and also some cards that deal direct damage, not direct damage, damage to yourself, like I think Kazaka's self-destruct button. But funny enough, they did not actually include the big one. Which is the one that lets you take 2500 damage for normal summoning. So they're still going to be self KO decks. It looks like they kind of understood like, hey, maybe we should get rid of this. But I don't think they actually fully understood. In terms of the actual card, we have Moon Mirror Shield. Which, now that I look at it, I, I do feel like I could probably use at least one of these. I think I'll be fine. Because actually, funny enough, in this format, a card with... Uh, one card with this card might actually be kind of hard to go over because it's always going to be 100 attack stronger. Um, Bad Luck Blast, which I think is another uh, deal damage card. Target one face-up monster your opponent controls, take damage equal to half its attack, and then inflict damage to your opponent equal to the damage you took. If this card you control is destroyed by an opponent's card in the sense of the graveyard, they take a thousand instead. So yeah, definitely a self-KO card. Uh, um... Huh. Yeah, this is a burn card for sure. Um, Planet Pathfinder. It's because of here because of field spells. This card was already limited to one, so it's going to stay limited here. True Draco Apocalypse is sad because they were they realized that True Draco would be too strong in this format, so they are specifically nerfing them by making this card limited to one. <laughs> I bet you'll still see them, though, because I don't think any of their other cards really got hit. See Self Attack and Phantasm Spiral, they just don't want you to see you playing Phantasms, bro. Don't play it. Self Destruct Ants. This is another one that I think is, yeah, the one that makes you lose half your life points if you get hit by him and he's immune to fucking everything. So the Time Lords are also all N and R cards, I think. <laughs> if anything, I probably would have actually banned this guy, because fuck this guy. I hate him, I hate his look. But maybe he's not so bad in a in a format that has maybe a little bit less URs and SRs in it. We'll see. Uh, Orcus. I can't believe Orcus Harporer is only a R. That seems wrong. But maybe... Maybe he's just... Okay. He's limited to one. <laughs> I didn't know he was an R card. Uh, Tenny. Yeah, Vishuda's really good. I like Vishuda. Um, I think some decks use the Tenny engine. Uh, not a lot. I think some other future cards that are coming up, well, we're, if you are someone more familiar with the TCG and stuff, then you'll, we'll probably see more Tenny Engine as some of the cards that actually use it come out. But right now, I actually think you don't see very much of them, which is a shame because I think they were very strong. I say it's a shame now, but watch till later when they actually become kind of a problem to deal with. And also their counter trap is gone because if you actually... <laughs> destroy this card it negates something if you have a face of non-effect monster but also if you destroy it while it's set face down you can summon one non-effect monster from the extra deck and you can get blue eyes ultimate dragon and you just get a 4500 beat stick and in this format that's tantamount of basically being unable to do shit <laughs> so good call on that one utagra the generator boss of delusions yeah this guy needed to be hit to one because this effect with the generators is extremely good and the Megalith pool, I think a lot of people were saying that we're going to play Megalith the second that this was announced as an NO slash R festival. So, of course, they got hit. And I think if we go to semi limited, um, yep, there's the other Megalith. Also got hit. 
Some of the other choices here, brain control is limited to two because, because this is a specific, <laughs> because of the format of what it is, there's actually a lot of, because this part of it really sucks. This effect right here, if you don't know this old brain control, um, probably a lot of people don't know this nowadays. Old brain control, you paid 800 life points, you took one face up monster until the end of phase. They eventually eroded the card and added the stipulation where um, it, you can only take control of something that can be normal summon slash set. Um, so cards that can only be special summoned are kind of... It just made brain control much worse. Um, but in this limited format, it's actually much better, so they limited it to two. Star Seraph Scepter. Yeah, I think this is the XYZ monster that you can target one other card in the field, destroy it, and if you do, draw one card. Yeah, pretty good. Night Draco Lich. Magispector Raccoon Bunbuki. And Magispector Crow Yata. Just think, I don't know why they specifically are just saying no Magispectors in this place. Psychic Blade. This one just sounds funny because it can give you a 2,000. <laughs> 2,000 attack and defense if you just pay 2,000 life points, which just sounds funny. I guess they're just like, no cheesing on this one. Magical Meltdown is here because I think Magical Meltdown is already um, a card that can really fuck things up. So that's why they kept it here. But I think in this format, it actually could probably go to 3 because really... You can't get Alistair because he's an SR. Pretty sure Invocation is an SR. So you can't even use you can't even use the classic tactic normal summon Alistair. You can't do that. Um, you can some of the fusions are definitely R's and N's in it, but you can't actually get your main dude. I think the only R Alistair is a Link Summon card, so you have to go out of your way to Link Summon him, which just makes it much harder to do anything, especially in this format. So the only real effect you get from here is that your opponent can't activate cards when your fusion summoned. Uh, yeah, your fusion summons can't be negated. That's about it. Harmonizing Magician is here because, yeah, even in a limited format, she'd be very strong. Her ability to just, like, get another monster on the field with her. That's just stupid. <laughs> stupid good. Uh, Huge Rakers, of course, have to be attributed a little bit down, and this is... Because you don't have access to your SR, this guy probably would have seen a little bit more play, so they decided to just nip it in the bud and... Get rid of him right now. Smart though. Raphian, the other Time Lord. And Psy Reflector. What does this guy do? This gets you Assault Mode Activate. That's right. I was always wondering what this guy did. Because I see him in some decks, but I actually don't know what he does in them. But yeah, okay. He gets the side mode, the Assault Mode Activate. Got it. And Zolga the Prophet. If you control an Earth Fairy monster except for Zolga the Prophet, you can special summon this card from your hand, then look at the top five cards from the top of each player's deck. When a monster that was normal summoned by attributing this card declares an attack, you can banish this card from your graveyard, destroy that monster, and if you do, inflict 2,000 points to your opponents. You can only use each effect of Zolga the Prophet once per turn. I don't know why this guy's limited to two, but there must be some combo that I just don't know. And that's what I assume, because I was away from Yu-Gi-Oh for a very long time. Yeah. All right, makes sense. Not actually very many things that were limited. They didn't even really hit the big trouble, um, the big trouble self OTK decks, to be honest. Um, and this is the deck I'm going to be going with. Um, it's gadgets with some generator cards. Yeah, I don't know. Gadgets were really good when I played. And they're all ends cards for some reason, because the gadgets have fallen that hard that the gadgets are just too slow to do anything. Um, so the second that I saw it's an NR festival, hey, open season to get gadget play in there. And I'm already kind of used to how the gadgets play because I had to do that terrible Yugi fucking fight. Um, so yeah, I ended up looking up, because I didn't, I was like, what all end and R cards are even good? And I found someone who gave a deck list, and I kind of looked at the deck list, and I said, that seems fun, and I've tested it, and it does seem fun. So that's what I got right now. I think I might have added Boot Admiral at Boot Up Admiral. <laughs> I think that sounds like something I added to the deck, as opposed to something they suggested you should use. And I assume that's why whatever I replaced, because I don't know why the Phantom Knights are in here, because you need a two level two monsters, but I don't have any level two monsters. <laughs> I don't think I can, unless, uh, actually, do I get a bunch of these with these? No, they're level 4. So yeah, I don't know how to summon the Phantom Knights on this one. So I might have to look for replacements for them. Because I'm not fully sure how you're supposed to summon them when you have no level 2 dudes. Yeah, the level 1, 3, 4s. 
uh, nines, one eight, and that's basically it. But I'll figure it out, and I'm kind of looking forward to it. I've actually tested this deck against the AI, and it works out pretty well against them, <laughs> so it should do perfectly fine against the um, against the other dudes. Yeah. That makes sense. So that's the end of the video, everyone. I just kind of want to look over the N slash R festival. I'm really excited. If you got a specific deck you're going to be working out, tell me about it because I'm actually kind of interested to see what other people are going to be running. This is going to be as close to a meta without Ash Blossom as, as opposed to just literally going to the old meta, which is just using cards that were here before. When did Ash Blossom actually come out? Let me see. Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. Because eventually they are going to do one that's just old. Uh, let's see, TCG release was in 2017, so it would have to do it before Maximum Crisis. <laughs> if they ever decide to do a pack that's before Maximum Crisis, there you go. Then we will get a no Ash Blossom festival. We'll see how that goes. No hand trap. That's, that's not true because there's plenty of other festivals. But you see what I'm saying here is that the gadgets can easily be stopped by Ash Blossom. And that would completely devastate them because they can't keep getting their gadget cards and that would really suck. Uh, but because there's no Ash Blossom, I can play them for fucking free and not worry about anything. So yeah, what deck do you think you're going to be running? Uh, are you looking forward to it? Are you just here for the 2000? Because I can understand that. If you have any suggestions about what other XYZ or Link monster I should use, feel free to tell me. Because I don't remember where the hell, why the hell they're in the deck, to be honest. See, I have 4,000. I can't wait for the 2,000 and I'll have enough for um, 60 packs. Yes. Yes. 60 packs. No, 600 packs. Because it's 10 packs for 1,000, right? Am I stupid? Am I math bad? Do I math bad? Yes. We'll end it on this monthly. Goodbye, everyone. You guys have a good day. Have a good night, and I'll see you guys next time. Gyakukaryu Panda.